Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here's your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is what will tomorrow's freight broker do with my friend Ben Buchanan. How's it going, Ben? Doing great, Joe. It sounds so professional. (laughs) Happy happy to be on. (laughs) But you've seen behind the scenes, you know it's not professional. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Ben, please introduce yourself and your company. Sure. So Ben Buchanan, VP of Account Management um, at LoadSmart, uh, digital freight brokerage based in, in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, quite and simple, we move more with less, and we help we help shippers uh, from the uh, SMB space all the way up to large enterprise. And today we're going to be talking about the the real shift from you know the traditional freight broker and how they provide value moving into the more digital space. The world is changing, and we're going to the talk about changing. what will tomorrow's freight broker. We kind of know what today's freight broker does, and some of its some some freight brokers today are very much you know on the load smart spectrum where they're you know highly uh, technical, a lot of lot of di- digital uh, digital activity, and then you still have guys who you know banging the phones, picking up phone calls. So we're going to talk about that that shift from yesterday to to, to tomorrow. So, but before we do that, Ben, please uh, talk a little bit about you. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? We were just talking about this. I know you were a teacher, and I, I've got an education degree too. So, talk a little bit about where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? And uh, and then we'll talk about your career here in uh, uh, logistics. You bet. So born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Lived here my entire life. Been a lot of places, seen a lot of things, but uh, this is definitely home. Um, Went to Arizona State, got my undergrad. And like like you said, I was uh, uh, entering in the the teaching and education world. Uh, I was also coaching basketball uh, at a high school. Did that for about three or four years. Loved it, Uh, but just couldn't make it work. And so by chance got into the, uh, the wonderful world of logistics as we talk about. And here I am 10 years later. So what was your first gig in logistics? I worked as a carrier rep, uh, at Global Trans here in Scottsdale. Oh, the behemoth. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I saw the rise, you know, when we, when I, when I first started as a startup, uh, to now it's, you know, they just merged with uh, Worldwide Express. Right. Right. So how many, how many employees were there when you joined? Uh, probably around about a hundred. You know, it was a an agent based model first, right. and then we opened. Then the the Little Brothers launched um, the the inside sales for truckload brokerage, and I was a part of one of the first training classes. And so rode that growth wave, got a ton of exposure, got to work very closely with the Lettos. You know, now they're doing great things over at uh, at Emerge. Yeah. Um, and and left uh, middle of uh, of nineteen to go to LoadSmart. I took some time off. Uh, and I started, uh, I started load smart at the beginning of 2021. So you obviously had a little bit of time to look around and consider your options. Um, what made you pick load smart as it compared to all the other, co- you could have joined a, probably a million companies out there. I was taking a lot of calls, but I wanted to be selective, right? I, I, I had a pretty good resume, um, in terms of the exposure <laughs> and the experience that I got at, at global trans, right? Um, and what really, what really drew me to, uh, to load smart was, uh, the vision. Uh, of the two founders, uh, the innovation and the way that they were thinking about solving problems. And they wanted to do it not, you know, on a transaction basis, but more on a wide scale, right? And, you know, the timing list was really good. I had taken some time off, which was really nice, spent some time with my wife and family. Uh, but I was ready to get back into it. And I was still keeping really, you know, in, 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 uh, up to, up to date on, you know, players, uh, right. the industry, competitive landscape, all of that stuff, right? And, uh, it was just really good timing. And I think, you know, at the time that I joined, they were looking to really scale and, you know, take, uh, take the, the company to the next level. And here I am. And, uh, we've, we've had a very, very strong first half of, of, of 2021 and, uh, expectations for the second half are even, even bigger. So you're, you're like me. You, you have that, that good run over there at Global Trans and you go, Hey, you know what? Life's short. I'm going to go enjoy life for a little bit and take some time off. And, um, 
I interviewed Andrew Leto and Michael Leto on my podcast. Those guys, when they left Global Trans, which was a wild success, and they left Global Trans to start Emerge, they didn't take any time off. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, would take, I would take at least a month or two or three. I mean, geez, oh, Pete. I, I guess that's the entrepreneurial spirit. They're driven. Me, you, me and you, Joe, are, yeah, a little bit different. I, I really <laughs> enjoyed the time away. Yeah, yeah. Give, refresh your brain a little bit. So, so you wanted to join Load Spartan again with the idea that this is the new the new breed of broker. I mean, I don't think that's exaggerating. That I mean, they they come with a tech focus. You guys come with a tech focus, uh, and, and I should say tech focus because there's also part of having a tech focus is we're going to use the technology where it makes sense. And we're going to focus on our customers with our our people. Let the robots and the technology do the other work. So let's talk about what will tomorrow's freight broker look like? What will they be doing? What are some of the things that I will get from t- tomorrow's freight broker that I don't necessarily get from today's freight broker? What's the first thing? You bet. Where do I start? Well, I, I think the uh, one of the, the things that drew me to LoadSmart um, was this uh, instantaneous pricing. You know, I went to their front end website before I became, you know, I became, a, I came on board and I was looking like, how does this work? Right. So I had a lot of questions about that and not going to lie, I was a little bit of a skeptic, but now, you know, looking at it and being a part of it for the, uh, you know, the last six months uh, has really opened my eyes. And I think you're starting to see a huge, huge paradigm shift in terms of how today's freight broker is evolving into more of that digital space. And so what I mean by that is we, LoadSmart is providing instantaneous rates in shippers routing guides. And so the traditional routing guide, if carrier A doesn't like it, goes to carrier B, we're inserting a rate. And if that shipper likes that, they can click book and the whole thing is 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 automated. And right. in fact, so there's first 80, none of that back and there's, forth. There's none of that back and forth. It's none of like, hey, I think this rate goes for this today. It's in my head, it's on a spreadsheet. It's all done via the system. And the one thing that's great about what we do is we have a hundred percent rate um, guarantee, capacity guarantee that if our rate is incorrect based off of what we put in, we're still gonna we're still gonna fulfill that order on the capacity side. So if I'm working with you, uh, Load Smart, I can say, hey, I need something moved from uh, Detroit to Arizona, and um, I give you the zip codes, I give you all my information, I put it in there, and you guys, bam. You give instantaneous quote, and that, and and that's Absolutely. not done. That's not done because you have really smart people. I know you have really smart people, but they're not smart that way. That's done because you have it in your systems, and you're using AI to create that dynamic price that says, Joe, based on today, and based on what you where you want to go, um, and the market, this is what the this is the right price. Absolutely, we have a lot smarter people than me. So forty percent of our staff is data scientists engineers and product managers. So all they're doing all day long. Is yeah. It's, that, it's you pretty think about you, you, you think about the difference between t- 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 tomorrow's freight broker and today, how many freight brokerages, I know there's a lot of people getting technology people, but 40% of your people are data scientists. Yes. Techies. And so they're solving some exactly right. And they're solving some extremely complex problems because you know, the rate variability right now is so difficult. And do we get it right every time? No, of course not. But you know we're constantly learning. The machine learning that we're we're we're, uh, we're looking into and investing in uh, is making our pricing algorithms that much stronger. And to your point, is we're providing instantaneous rates to shippers. Now shippers again, they don't necessarily have to take that, but if they like it at the rate, we back that up with 100 percent uh, capacity guarantee. And we have partnerships with uh, several of the uh, the TMS providers. So the integration that we do uh, into that TMS, the shippers using, is seamless. I don't want to say it's a plug and play because I'm probably doing our integrations and and tech team a disservice, Uh, but we can, we can be operational pretty quickly. And what we're seeing, particularly during the pandemic, Joe, is uh, shippers used us very frequently because trucks were were needed, right? It may have come at a premium, but we were able to do that instantaneously and provide that value by a click of a button. But I would rather, you know, if I'm a shipper and as we're right at the heart of the pandemic and somebody says... Uh, yeah, I, I normally get this for 1800 bucks and I call XYZ company and they go, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to try and honor that $1,800 and, uh, uh, yeah, let me look around and, uh, yeah, I'll call you back later. Well, I don't have, I don't want to be called back later. And then I call, I go to load smart and it says instantaneously, it's 2200 bucks. I go, I get it. Rates went up. I don't want to promise for something. I want a paper rate. I don't want to promise for something you can't deliver. Give me what the real price is today because 
I'm moving a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't want to pay an extra four hundred bucks, but I'd rather pay the extra four hundred bucks than not move my freight. Absolutely, and a lot of the shippers that we were, you know, still service, you know, especially during the pandemic, if they needed those trucks, right, because the consumer demand was so high, particularly right. in grocery, bottled beverages, right. And so, yes, that premium was a little bit higher, but we came through, uh, yeah. you know, in, in, in an instantaneous way. Yeah, for sure. So and and as a result, we were able to provide a lot more value, you know, within their network. And if you think about, you know, what today would be, what a lot of companies would do is they have that, that, that I could give you an instantaneous rate. You call up and I know that, that lane really well. And I give it to the guy who uh, really knows it. And he says, yep, uh, that's two, two grand from uh, Detroit to wherever. Um, that's one guy, right? And maybe that guy's wrong. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he didn't see the last dip in the market. We're trusting human brains to do something that they can't really do. And what you guys are doing when you have that instantaneous quote, you're bringing in all sorts of data from your own systems, but I'm assuming you get some from outside systems too? We do. We do. So we aggregate all of that internally. You know, some of the, some of the lanes that we run, we're going to use our internal data because we're actually buying better than market. But we also use other market indices to, to help drive that pricing algorithm. The great thing is we have levers behind the scenes that we're adjusting, sometimes on the fly, to seeing how much demand that we have within our network, and then matching that up with the operational cap, uh, capabilities. Uh, and that dictates our price. And yep. so we're able to, to be really flexible, you know, sometimes like immediately right. to be able to either get more demand in our network or choke that off. Right. And we're doing that both in the, in the spot and contract. Side right. of the business. And I think dynamic pricing, uh, I've said this when we were prepping, Ben, I think this is one of those places where there's going to be haves and there's going to be have nots. Either you have it and you're going to be successful or you don't have it and you're not going to be successful because it is, it is a game changing technology all by itself. And I think it's telling that uh, you guys invested in dynamic pricing for your own company as opposed to a lot there are companies outside companies where you can say give me dynamic pricing take all of the data and do it for me but you guys decided no we're not doing that we're going to spend our own our own uh, money and create that for ourselves absolutely and that was like the first three two or three years of the organization right it was collecting all of this data and aggregating it in the appropriate way to then be able to go to market and we were one of the you know Loadsmart was one of the first to market with this instant quote quoting api and we're seeing a lot of traction with it. There's others now that have caught up, but right. we're making That's, some improvements. Right. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm sure there's other people doing it. But what's interesting is there's thousands of freight brokers. Not thousands are doing it. Not hundreds are doing it. Not dozens are no. doing it. <laughs> so, not at all. So, so tomorrow it's going to be very different. It's going to be you're either doing it or you're probably not in business. I would agree with that, yes. And we're hearing that, particularly from our large enterprise shippers, that this is the way of the future. It makes it so much more seamless from them. Granted, it's a learning process on both sides. And we're taking that partnership uh, partnership lens and view, like, hey, we want to help you with this. Right. We also are, are working hand-in-hand -hand with the TMS providers because we're finding out as we do this, there's a lot of different levers and modules within these TMSs right. that shippers don't even know about, right? And we're finding this out in real time with our integrations that we can actually maximize and, and help our shippers in a lot of different ways. Uh, but we're, we're hearing that directly from uh, a lot of our enterprise, our partners, that this is going to be the wave of the future. Right. And you know what's interesting about using AI in general? I've read a few books. So I'm no, 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 no expert at all, but I'm trying to understand it is – it it does things in a way that is very logical. So it's it's using it's using those levers, as you said. There's the algorithm, and what's interesting, what, what a lot of people might not know, but so I, I paid off a credit card. I had some. I had been traveling. I put all this money. I paid off the credit card, and then the next day they go four thousand dollar increase. I was like four thousand dollars increase. I don't even want that. Why did they give me a four thousand increase in credit? And I kind of Googled it because I was like, why did this happen, right? AI does that. So AI just looked and said, yep, this, 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 is, the, this is the profile for someone who can pay their credit card on a timely basis. And I was like, oh, my God. And, you, you know, the, you, you think about the way credit decisions were made not so long ago is – they would sit down and go, well, we're going to look at, we're going to look you in the eye and we're going <laughs> to see if you have character and, and, um, no more. Now it's, now there's AI that says, boom. And you think about it, Ben, if you and I were kind of doing that credit decision, we're like, 
we're not going to double somebody's credit for just because he paid off the bill. We're not AI. And by, and by the way, I still pay. So the guy, AI knew what they're doing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I, I, still I think that card. To see that. I, and I agree. And I think you're starting to see that shift right now with, with freight brokers, right? We're looking at buyer behaviors uh, outside of the human element and actually looking at it through a technology lens and an AI standpoint. And it's, it's showing a lot of disparities in terms of what we think we know versus what actually is happening. Right. Right. And I imagine that's really true, like right after the pandemic, where, you know, some day, some, some day in March, somebody's saying, hey, you know, it's this much money. Then, and then two days later, it's, you know, tr- truck's not available. I don't even know what the price is. <laughs> and um, you and I could, you know, get in a little bit of a panic or a little tizzy. And we don't know. We're just adding numbers on, to, you know, we're just adding extra costs. And meanwhile, AI is adjusting already. And it and by the time probably two or three days in, it said, oh, we we got this. We know what's going on. Yeah, it's because we're collecting all of these different inputs, right? And all these different variabilities, you know, and we're looking at that. And like I said, we have a team that's fully dedicated to this to make it right. as best as we possibly can. And we're trying to get as much data into our network as we can. And then in turn, you know, putting the, the pricing algorithms together that our end shippers can can uh, um, can actually utilize. Excellent. So the first one is is instantaneous price and quote and quote and tender basically just bam you, you guys can move that freight so um what's the second one we're working on mode optimization right now uh and mode optimization uh we're in the infancy stages of it right now but we have a we have a pretty big big plans on how this is going to work and so what we're evaluating right now with all of the different data that uh data points that we have in our network is approximately 30 percent of our our shipments could have moved rail so we made a big push middle of last year that we wanted to be a multimodal brokerage, right? So we launched our rail capabilities. We're partnering with different rail uh, providers in an integrated fashion too, which, which helps streamline the, the quote and book process. Uh, we've launched LTL. Uh, we're in the process of doing a, basically a 2.0 launch in terms of going carrier direct. Um, we already had a drayage product and of course our bread and butter is full truckload. So point being is we have a full multimodal suite. Uh, and what we're doing now is we're looking at different data points. Uh, different freight characteristics at the time of uh, of quote and book, and then offering different solutions to that particular shipper. And so saying, hey, this load actually is really suitable for rail. And by doing so, yes, it may, it may be an extra day of transit, but we can save you 30%. And it's better for the environment. You want to do that. And we're starting to see a lot of traction with that. We have a lot of internal KPIs around it that we really want to optimize, um, you know, different, using different modes. And then the end goal and end vision, this is going to be a front end platform for us where shippers can go, ideally the SMB to, to middle enterprise mid market, where they can go type in their freight characteristics and our system is going to um, give back what's the best mode of, op, uh, mode of transportation for that particular shipper. So when you say mode optimization, are you doing that um, with the system? All system, yeah. So the system is identifying the freight characteristics based off right. of O and D pair, uh, based off of um, you know the, the the size of of shipments, how many pallets, how much does it weigh, and we're we're looking you know with now launching LTL, taking in, if you're moving five or six LTL pallets in a week, why don't you consolidate that into one truckload? May be able to save some money and you can increase your transit time, right? So this is all stuff that we're evaluating right now, and we're gonna we're gonna productize it, and we're in the process of doing that. Uh, for for front end shippers to come in and, and actually do that and be able to get instantaneous solutions at a click of a button. So that's I think that I think the the change there, you know, again talking about tomorrow's broker is the fact that it's being done by the system because we've always kind of done that, um, you know, kind of anecdotal where you go, wait a sec, is that going to be moving five LTLs to Chicago? Yeah, see if you can get a full truckload, right and it would be a manual process. And and usually, uh, you know, a lot of times you do those little studies and, and it doesn't work. And it's nice that your system's able to kind of look and say, here's here's that instantaneous answer. So when somebody says, I need to mo- move stuff from point A to point B, and if they think in truckload and you can shoot back, I can do this. I can do this as, uh, you know, maybe if, if, if there's a scarcity of trucks, I move those in two LTLs or I move it on rail or I can, <laughs> you, you, you name it, I can move it. 
the point, you're exactly right, Joe. The point of this is giving the shipper solutions and optionality to move their product. And I, we believe that this is going to be a very scalable type of, of offering. We're already seeing a lot of traction right. with some of our shippers, right? And to your point, it's, yeah, of course it can happen anecdotally. And I know others are doing that. Right. But, but this is, this is something that we can actually. This is tomorrow's freight right. broker. Not Absolutely. any freight broker, tomorrow's freight broker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we can, we can, uh, we're, we're already starting to see a lot of a lot of traction on this, right? And, and you know, you mentioned sustainability. I think it's going to be more and more of a of a driver. So we might find a company that says, "Look, I our, one of our core values for our customers is sustainability. So we're going to we're going to play that up, and uh, we're going to spend if we have to spend an extra one percent to take the most sustainable solution, then so be it." And I think also, you know, we're we're going to uh, get to the place where you say, uh, and this more this relates more to the last mile is we keep saying, oh yeah, you can have that that t shirt delivered to your house overnight, but do you really need it? Because we could do it more sustainably if we waited. I think we're going to start seeing uh, those options given to um, consumers, but I think we're also going to see companies like yours are going to start saying, hey guys, you want to be more sustainable? We'll put we'll. We'll code that in. We'll make that. We'll make that an option. What's the What's the Absolutely. best way to send it for the environment? Absolutely, and we're investing in that right now to actually show visibility. If you do move this, let's just say on the right. rail, this is the the CO two emissions that it's going to uh, be releasing compared to doing it over the road truck. Right. And I know there's so. people probably listening saying, "Oh, well, this is all extra cost, extra cost." But really, a lot of the stuff that we can do to help the environment in our business, we're already doing. Like we're. Tr- our, our sworn enemy is empty miles. <laughs> and, and if we, as, so as an industry, can chase down those empty miles and have them be full miles or, you know, reduce them 30 percent, we're really helping out the environment and our customer at the same time. And, and also the driver. And, right? and, and also not bad for the bottom line. <laughs> not bad for the bottom line, but also helping out that driver because if they don't have freight on their truck, they're not making right. money. Right. Right. So it, it's a win-win across the board. Right. I love it. So. Number one, instantaneous quote, bam, I get that. And at the same time, I get the options, the optionality. I love it. You guys are always coming up with new words in this business. The optionality, (laughs) the mode optimization. So what's the third thing that tomorrow's freight broker will be delivering that today's freight broker doesn't necessarily deliver? Data, data, data. Uh, I know a lot of of, uh, brokers are talking about this, uh, particularly on the digital side. Right, but uh, we're launching uh, a, a full-scale go-to-market plan for for data insights, and we've already launched our first our first product. Uh, that again, we're getting a lot of really good feedback from, and essentially because we have so many different data points, uh, we have so many different um, entities touching our network. We wanted to action off of that, right? And so what we've been able to do is take some of the information that we're getting at you know, some of our shippers' locations and bring that to life. What do I mean by that? So looking at what their average tender time is, right? And looking to see, hey, if your average tender time, uh, tender days is five days, it can actually save you 10, 15% as opposed to doing it less than 48 hours. We now have those data points that we can actually share with the shipper. Additionally, looking at the different locations, we can say, hey, eight out of 10 times, there's some sort of extra charge, whether it's detention, right. layover, because your facility is not loaded with drivers. And a, you're, I think you're probably hearing a lot of this too, where shippers want to become that shipper of choice. This is now information and data that we can provide to them free of charge, by the way, to show them how they can offer uh, and be a lot, more, right. a, lot, a lot more effective. Right, right. And those, those data insights, we've always kind of, we, we've been doing this manually for well, the last five, 10 years, but it's not, it's not easy. Right. And, and, and when when this when this when the tender might have come by email right or came by phone, I might not have a, a good record of when it happens. I you know it's interesting. I, I track a lot of things I do using Excel spreadsheets. The problem is I don't always enter the stuff in at the right time. So then later on, I I don't have it, and that's the problem with with uh, working outside of a system. So as soon as you're working inside a system, now every the data is there. You know. You're exactly right. And so on that point, so we're, we're getting all of the, the driver in and out times at these different locations, tagging those to specific shippers, right? So we have all of this information now 
And now we're aggregating it, making it come to life and saying, hey, look, Shipper, this is how you are performing right now. And right. your average tender time is three days. Comparable to, to some of your, your competitors, let's just say it's a retail shipper, right. their average is seven days. And guess what? Their costs are 12% less. That is extremely powerful. And that's something that we're going to be giving. And we're already doing that right now uh, to a lot of our shippers in that way. Right. You know what? It, it, this is a little off topic, but it reminds me of this, this idea of Yelp, Yelp for shippers. How long till we get to a Yelp for shippers in this industry where you say, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, Joe and Ben's place because they load slow and everybody knows it. I think drivers probably been talking about this anecdotally and carriers for a long time. And we're now starting in our business, starting to pick this up and say, Hey, let's, let's, quantify this let's make some decisions based on this you're, you're exactly right and what we're doing is we're taking that actually into action because we hear that directly from our carriers when we're talking to them like hey i'm not going to that chipper because it takes four hours that's going to eat into my transit time i know they don't pay attention this is a non-starter so we can start capturing right. that data entering it in in our system right and we can we can classify it however we want and now that becomes actionable right, right. like hey we've talked to 15 drivers over the last 20 days and all of them said they don't want to go to the shipper. Now right. we have that captured, and we can bring that back to them and have a conversation. And, and, and you know, it's interesting that now we have ELD information and whole, all this information out there. We also know which we've anecdotally known certain areas are more congested than others. But if you start to realize, you know, that in your data and say, you know what, we're going to charge extra because we know driving into Chicago on Friday afternoon might be might be a little hairy, right? Um, I know all about that, Joe. I was in Chicago last week. I left <laughs> about two and a half hours before my flight. I ran to the gate because of the traffic oh, yeah. from downtown oh, to O'Hare. Not fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it looks close on the map, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's like 13 miles or something, right? Right, right. Yeah, I have a family on the other side of uh, Chicago. So I've made the trip hundreds of times to uh, Milwaukee. And... Um, you either get there before Friday's traffic or after. And every once in a while, you're like, oh, it won't be that bad. You only do that. that I, you have to do that every few years to remind yourself it really is that bad. <laughs> but anyway, we, bad. we, 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 we want to be able to use those that data to start informing these decisions. And if the shipper of choice is a big part of it. And it's interesting. I'm, I think it was probably five, seven years ago, the first time I heard some carrier saying, we're firing a number of shippers that aren't doing the right thing. They yell at our, they yell at our, our uh, dispatch people. They don't load us properly. They don't unload us. Uh, they don't unload and uh, they don't pay on time. Bam, gone. And that seems, you know, you go, no one gives gets rid of customers. No, nope. trucking companies and, and brokers do get rid of carriers. Now. I that, do get rid of bad customers that, now. That is true. And you look right now, just how the market's been, you know, trucks are in high, high demand. So they could be selective in terms of who they're working with, both on the shipper direct side and the broker side. And so for us, we take that holistic approach where we, of course, want to provide value to our shippers. But in turn, we want to provide value to our, our, our carriers as well, because without them, we can't move any of the freight. Yep. Ben, you've lived this. And so I know I have is when, when a shipper who seems like a really great shipper all of a sudden is like really friendly, like, yeah, Hey, Ben, come on in. Oh my God. I don't know. Yeah. I know I didn't take your calls for the last six months. Come on in, sit down. Yeah. I want to start. Uh, we got four truckloads tonight and, uh, we're moving like 30 a week and you're like, Oh, yeah, there's something's wrong here. They aren't paying their bills. There's some, there's some upset broker down the street. <laughs> you that, go. that is true. That is true. Yeah. So that, that's another data insight we're going to have. Who, who, who's paying their bills and who's a good who's a good player and who's not? So we talked about instantaneous quote. That's something tomorrow's, tomorrow's freight broker is going to give us. He's also going to give us mode optimization and not anecdotally. This can be instantaneous. Then we're going to we're going to work this data insights. And I think we were when we were talking about this earlier, it's like we're not going to just work in your freight every day. We're going to also rise above it, rise above the fray and um, work on it. You know, look strategically. What do we need to change? Well, it, and that's a really good point. Like we talked about earlier, is now it allows our our internal team, the logistics professionals that we hire, right, to get get out of the day to day, get out of the data, the mundane, back and forth, right, and be more strategic to ultimately provide more value to our shippers. So evaluating some of the insights that we're collecting, putting it together a package, and delivering that to the shipper to say, hey, look, this is actually how you can better 
your operation and in turn potentially save some money. Right. right? And so that's what we're really focusing on right now internally um, is, you know, how do we bring all of this stuff to life where we can actually provide value to our shippers? Yep. So what's number four? What's the fourth thing to borrow freight broker is going to do that today's des- definitely doesn't do? So one of the things that we're working on right now in evaluating uh, is what we're calling rate transparency. And this is specific to the uh, the RFP broken model, I'll say, right? Because the way that it's been going on for the last six to nine months has been, uh, <laughs> it's not been favorable for shippers. Let's put it that way, right? right. One in every four uh, tenders is getting rejected. So ultimately that's going to the spot market where shippers are paying a higher premium. So what we what we want to do is provide true rate transparency. We were talking about this earlier. It'd be like us, you know, booking a a, a vacation on VRBO or uh, you know Airbnb without knowing where we're going and what the price is going to be. We show up. It may be a one bedroom. It may be a three bedroom, and we don't know that cost, right? right. And I think there's a huge aspect of trust um, that's lacking right now, particularly on the uh, on the freight broker side that we're trying to solve for. And by doing so is providing like what we're actually paying for this. And so we've come up with a program in terms of, you know, having a floor and having a ceiling and anything in between that, of course, working hand in hand with the shipper to show, hey, this is where we're buying at. And if we buy at this particular level, this is going to be um, the markup on it, you know, because we right. got to make money too. But that markup's not going to be the 15, 20% as, as some of these brokers are operating at. It's going to be a lot lower. It's going to be a lot more competitive. Right. And by doing so, and by doing so, we're going to uh, provide 100% what we call PTA, primary tender acceptance, which right. right now is really bad for a lot of shippers because these these carriers, particularly on the broker side, right. they, can't, they can't get they can't they can't operate profitably with rates they delivered back in, in the beginning. So of the year. talk about talk about that tender waterfall. I know some people might be listening, going, "I don't know what you're talking about. What is what is tender? What do you mean by primary and secondary?" Talk about that because that and, and talk about also well, paper rates. Talk a little bit about paper rates while we're talking about that. That that's that that's what these are right now. It's strictly paper rates. You know, brokers trying to predict what the cost is going to be for a calendar year is very difficult. And you look at the last nine months, the volatility. Right, there's no way that we could have predicted this. You know, in February with the polar vortex that occurred, in some instances, spiked rates as high as 50, 60 percent. Right. So you can't operate at those rates that you provided at the beginning of the year at a fixed level and, and, and be able to operate profitably. So as a broker, it puts you in a very tough bind, right? Because you're going to say, Hey, if I accept this, I'm going to be losing two, three hundred dollars. I may do that one, two, maybe five times, but I can't do this long. You have to be a pretty special shipper for somebody to eat that much rate. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so what's happening now is the broker and even some of the assets are blocking those tenders. The shipper right. still has to move that freight. So I think you know, getting back to that RFP process, if I was to say, hey, it, it, you know, it's it's, I, I quoted this for the year, and I said eight hundred dollars, and somebody else said nine hundred dollars, somebody else said a thousand dollars. I, as the eight hundred dollar guy, I I'm the primary, right? I won that business, but then I never take it at eight hundred bucks. So you keep asking, hey, Joe, you said you do this for eight hundred bucks. I have to reject it this time. Because the reason I'm rejecting is because people are paying two thousand dollars for this now, right? And the guys behind me most likely say, "No, nah, I won't take it." But you get to the third guy and he says, "I won't take it for that number, but I'll take it for two thousand dollars." So that's the paper rate. It, it's you put it on paper, but that's the only place it's really good because it's never reality. And what you're saying is, we got to get to a, a, a. You said it earlier, a hundred percent primary, but. It, the rate might go up. It's we'll accept it. It's just it, it's going to vary, right? So the way to describe this a little bit differently is is having essentially a band, right? So right. we'll have a a target rate which we agree on that with the shipper, like hey, this is what we want to pay. We can't predict the future. And looking at the last nine, you know, the twelve months, it's been extremely volatile, right? Right. So we want to flex with that um, the market rate. And what we'll do is at we'll show you our costs in terms of our target with the, the, the ceiling rate. And by doing so, then we'll show you, hey, if we buy between this, we're gonna charge you X percent markup. If we buy below the target rate, we're gonna provide X percent markup. Right. If we actually buy above the ceiling, now you have a decision that you wanna make, Shipper. Do you wanna go with that and try to get that uh, at, a, at a lower rate within your routing guide or taking it at the spot? That's your decision. But these are the conversations that we're having with, with a handful of our shippers right now. 
and they've been extremely receptive. We're in pilot with a handful of them, and we want to make this a wide scale type of uh, uh, of solution. That and then what sense. we want to do, the next thing is 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 fully productize this, right? So we talked about that eighty percent um, being no touch. Right now, it's 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 manual because we have to go in and make sure that the rates are accurate. So, when they so that's eight eighty percent of your shipments are no touch. So yes, this is this is the the automated nature of of freight. In tomorrow's world, and again, it's only going up. I know uh, um, this has just begun, and so it's just it's just begun. And then again, that gives your that gives your team time to say, "Hey, look, I don't have to be moving paper around or sending emails or calling carriers because that all happened <laughs> on a rail. That that that's automated. It gives them time to say, "I'm actually going to sit down and I'm going to look at what we did last month and how we can improve the business." It's looking strategically instead of then in a a transactional uh, part of the part of the 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 fog of war. Like, and most brokers <laughs> live in the fog of war, right? That's all day. They're going home. They're like, "Man, I missed lunch. I don't know what the hell happened today. I hope I made some money." <laughs> that that is true. That is true. And I, and I think some of our account managers are still missing lunch to come through for our customers. Right. But you're exactly right. Not having to build orders in the system. Typing in all that information, that's all no touch is huge. It's a huge time suck, right? And it's right. also a huge cost saver for us that we don't have to have the, uh, the, um, the humans actually doing that, right? right? And so to your point, it allows our account managers to be much more strategic, having conversations with load planners, having conversations with procurement, seeing how their network is working. Hey, look, we've actually moved 20% more in this facility. We like right. this because we have carriers that match this. Do you have more? Because we can we can take a lot more of this. Those are really good conversations to have, and those are conversations we're having right now. Right, right. So it's um it's interesting because that whole again they, that getting back to the primary tender, um, the idea that I have to work with, um, let's just say we decide to work together. You give me a rate that I make you either lose money on potentially, or you make a lot of money because rates went down. When I'm asking you to say, I say, Ben, I want we're we're in uh, June 2021. I want you to commit to rates that you'll live with for one year. You're like, God, Joe, who the hell knows what's going to happen? So you have to pad those rates. So you, if you were being honest, you said, I'm going to I'm going to take every single one. You really have to pad it. But then you could say, you know what? If I really pad it, Joe won't take it. So I'm going to give him. A paper rate and he won't know and th- both ways don't feel quite right to you but you you're in business i'm in business right a better way to say it is joe i just don't know nobody knows we're gonna come up with a price in the, that band and, and i want to make sure you get a truck first and foremost and i also need to make sure i make a buck is that okay with you <laughs> that that seems like the reasonable conversation i think it's extremely reasonable right and we're showing them what our cost is, right? So we're not gouging them by any means. We're saying, hey, the market right. has increased by 20%. I can't take a hit on this. Let's flex right. up to that. Give me a little bit of, uh, of extra right. because of, you know, we need to make money and we're providing right. value to you. And by doing so, we're going to have a hundred percent primary tenure right. acceptance rate that you don't have to go to the spot market. You don't have to go through your value guide. We're going to do that for you. Right. And, and really the biggest cost here isn't. Oh, I paid an extra hundred bucks for that. It's the the biggest cost is I didn't get to my customer on time. You know, people are you get really short sighted about rates sometimes, where they say, "Oh, well, that that shipper's never going to pay an extra hundred bucks or an extra two hundred bucks." They're like, "That's a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff in that truck." It's if it's if it's if it's mobile phones. Trust me, they're going to make their money. Right? Don't worry about totally. it. Totally. <laughs> Totally. And that's, and we've been talking a lot about the enterprise side, but that's one of the huge values that we're pushing right now on the SMB and SE side, the small enterprise. Right. We're really educating our shippers. Yeah. You right. may save 50 bucks. You may save 200 bucks on this transaction. Right. Congratulations. But on the long term, if you have an average of less than 24 hours of lead time, you're, right. you're actually paying 15, 20%. So that thought that, that cost saving that you thought right. you did doesn't really mean anything. And so right. this is the stuff that we're showing them through data insights. Which, by the way, Data Insights uh, for, for LoadSmart is free to all of our shippers, S&B, all the way up to large enterprise. And each of our shippers have their own Data Insights page 
It, of course, varies in, in terms of the volume, right, that we're right. moving for them. Uh, but this is something that we're, we're really, really, really excited about uh, because this is, as you're talking about, that shift to digital, right, uh, and how, how brokers can be much more, uh, right. they can provide much more value to, it, to their, their network. Right. We then that's the that's the fifth thing I know we want to talk about shift to dis, digital. And I think, um, you know, as I hear all this, I know you have this system. You have forty percent of your employees are are techies, right? And it's a good word, yeah, techies. And we, we call about, them we call them loadies internally, loadies, <laughs> Lo, loadies. All right, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but what what I think it speaks to is all right. So we can do things less expensively because we have all this technology in place and tomorrow's freight broker it's not just we just load smart everybody's going to be on this place where the margins can compress it's not going to compress down to you know nothing because you guys are in the middle and you're adding value you're adding the technology you're adding these insights you're adding uh, a lot but i think it's going to mean we're we're in the 3pl and freight broker space are going to have to find new ways to add value what are some of those ways you guys are kind of I, I mean, I guess you have more time also to spend with your customers too, because you're not managing the day to day freight. Absolutely. So I shouldn't say the wrong way to say it. Technology is bit managing the the heavy yeah. lifting. And our our motto, our mantra is we want to move more with less, right? And so we're doing that through the digital platform. And to answer your question, it, we're seeing this right now where the industry is really shifting to digital, and all the uh, the items that we just talked about: instantaneous pricing mode optimization, uh, reliable contracts and rate transparency, data insights is all of the ways that we're shifting to digital. And right. you, you mentioned it, you know, margins are going to compress. We're starting to see that right now. But because we do things in, in an automated fashion, we're able to operate right. at a little less margin right. because the computer and the technology is doing a lot for us. And one thing we haven't even talked about is on the carrier side, the digital freight matching right? that we have. I think over 50% of our, our transactions right now are, are uh, automated in terms of matching demand with supply. Uh, we have an internal uh, uh, load board where carriers are coming up and doing that touch touchless. So our carrier reps don't have to interact with them. They, of course, manage the relationship, and that's what we're really pushing. Uh, but that's a big part of our, our business model as well. So bringing that right. all together is you're really seeing this shift to digital. Right. And, you know, it's interesting if, if, and I know everybody in the transportation, logistics, 3PLs, everybody is, is adding some sort of technology. I'll add a TM. Well, I take it back. Not everybody even has a TMS at this point, which is crazy. That is true. Every once that in a while, crazy. I talk to some, every once in a while, I talk to somebody who says, oh, yeah, my 3PL doesn't have a TMS or my broker doesn't have a TMS. I'm like, all right, better man than me. I don't know how you even manage that. But um, if, if margins are compressing, so let's just say margins at one time were higher. Let's just say they're 20, 25, 20, 30 percent. And now I think when I had uh, Felipe uh, on the podcast, uh, Capella, he said that he thought they were below 14 and 14 percent. So if you kind of get to the place where let's just say they they lower a little more, the companies that aren't automating freight, they, they have a lot more headcount on they're really going to struggle to even be profitable. So I think you're going to see you either become, uh, you're either going to work with a freight broker who's you know very high tech or you're going to pay more. Well, and I think you're seeing that right now, right? Where a lot of the digital freight brokers, including LoadSpark, is taking market share from the traditional broker, right? Because right. of exactly what you, what you just said. So you we guys can still be profitable up. with with lower margins because you have the yeah. uh, lower cost. You have a lower cost per load. And that's that's my next point, right? Unit economics is a big, big shift in terms of uh, the, the shift into digital is looking at what that cost per load per transaction is, right? Because you can't, it, it, does, it does you no good if you're, yes, you may, may be making money uh, on the transaction level, but if right. it costs you more to do that, there, there's no right. point in that, right? And so that's something that we obsess over. That's something that we constantly are looking at. Uh, it's a balancing act, of course, because we want to come through for our shippers and our carriers, but it's it's top of mind and it, it's it's how we manage our business. Right. And, you know, this has come up a lot in my podcast. We were, we were prepping. We talked about this. This is very much like the old stockbroker. Stockbrokers used to be very transactional. They'd be like, hey, Ben, I got a hot tip. I got to get you in before it's too late. This one's, this one's going to the moon versus 
today's stock, there is no stock, but there's fewer stockbrokers. And now they're saying, Ben, let's sit down. Let's talk about, you know, do you have kids? Are you married? What are your dreams? Do you want to buy a cottage someday? You know, what, what, what are your goals and dreams? Let's, let's help you get there. And that's kind of the same shift we're doing in this business. The old freight broker who made his, his living by having a big spread. I, I just got a thousand bucks on this load. Hallelujah. I'm making a lot of money today versus the guy who says, Hey, look, I want to help. I want to look at your, your weekly, your monthly, your quarterly. And I want to help you move to better modes. I want to help you, uh, communicate better so we can get you better prices. You're, you're exactly totally right. different model. And that's what, and that's what you're seeing right now. So I, I think the analogy from the stockbroker to like the financial planner is very similar to what you're seeing in freight right. brokerage right now. Right. And, uh, what we're really obsessing about is that partnership, that value add and really building that trust and rapport right. with shippers. And by all the stuff that we talked about, we're starting to see that, right? They're saying, Oh, this makes sense. There's a different way of doing this. And oh, by the way, LoadSmart is a value partner within our network. Right. And, uh, we're just going to continue to double down on that, you know? So that's, that's, right. that's our plan. Well, it is, it is a, a virtuous cycle. The more you spend on tech, the better, the, the less sure. your cost per load, the more you have time to kind of be above the fray, work on the business rather than in it. And there, and again, you have to work in it for a while to understand how bad it is to have a whole bunch of expedites. But as soon as you yeah, understand sure. every expedite's a bad one, <laughs> you, uh, start to say, okay. I would like to be above the fray. I would like to be more of a strategic uh, relationship manager rather than uh, the guy who, who who makes a big spread every day. You're exactly right. And the last thing that we're doing, um, on, among a lot of other things, but a real big value add that we're looking at is the the managed transportation play, right? So being that consultative type of uh, right. partner uh, for our shippers, taking a large portion of their business, whether it's small, medium, or large enterprise, and giving that to us and let us manage that. Let us do the data insights. Right. Let us do the mode optimization. And we'll show you some cost savings along the way. Right. Um, and so that's a big initiative for us the second half of the year. And they're going to be heading into 2022. Very nice. Very nice. So Ben, please summarize this bad boy for us and then um, give us some final thoughts. You bet. Before freight we switch over to what's new at LoadSmart. <laughs> sure. So freight brokerage is shifting, right? So we talked about the, the shift to digital. Uh, in a variety of different areas. I believe that LoadSmart is, is, is well positioned in a lot of the different areas. We're thinking about this. We're putting a lot of resources uh, and financial capital behind it to, to always come through for our shipper. And we're listening to them and saying, what do they need? What is their pain points? And we're building and crafting solutions around that. And we talked about it throughout today's, today's session, Joe, is you're seeing that shift. And I think the, the folks that don't really uh, uh, adopt it or buy in or embrace it, they're going to get left behind. Right. And the conversations that we're having with our shippers is this is the, the whole the whole space is going to digital. And uh, we're excited. We're excited to be along for the ride. And we're excited to be a big, big part of the uh, uh, the change. Very nice. Very nice. So, Ben, before you go, before we wrap this bad boy up, tell us, how do we reach out to you guys? Well, first off, who you guys serve? Who are some of your your areas that you focus on? Yeah, so we're multimodal digital freight brokerage, like we talked about. So full truck load. Wait, that's, LTL, a, that's a mouthful. Say that again. Multimodal. Yeah, I talk. What? I talk. I talk pretty fast. <laughs> a multimodal uh, digital freight brokerage. So full truck load, LTL, drayage, rail. Uh, talked about the mode optimization stuff. Uh, we service SMB shippers. You know, moving one transaction per day or per month, all the way up to ultra large enterprise that are moving hundreds of loads, thousands of loads a day, Whoa. Uh, and everything. It, yeah. <laughs> Everything in between. Um, and you so get, a, some you get a hold what, of us. what are some of the industries these focus in on? Good, good question. So we we manage it all. So from from consumer packaged goods to retail uh, to agricultural to automotive to bottled beverages, um, industrial manufacturing, we do it all. Very nice, very nice. So how do we reach? To, how do we reach out to you? Oh, before I forget, are you guys doing any conferences coming up here? Any, uh, in person conferences or uh, virtual conferences coming up? Yeah. So I believe the first one that we're going to be doing is the Freight Waves Conference in November. And uh, I think it's in the festival. I so, think it's called the Festival of Freight or F. Wait. Am, I think that's. Wait. The Festival of Future. I'm going to screw this up. I'm sorry, Freight Waves. It was, a, I think it was Festival <laughs> or Future, Future Festival of Freight or Festival of Future Freight. F3. <laughs> F3 sounds great. I don't know what it's called, but we're going to have a, a huge presence there. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I believe this is the first in-person conference since the pandemic. And so seeing a lot of our, our peers, seeing a lot of our shippers and carriers, I think it's going to be a great time. So we're going to be doing that. We're doing some other webinars that we've been hosting. Um, and, it, and if you want to get a hold of us, loadsmart.com is the best way to do so. Yep. Ben, I just Googled it here. It is. Oh, gosh. It was. Then I, then I lost it. Hang on. Future of Freight Festival at Freight Waves. And that's uh, November 8th through the 10th down in uh, Chattanooga. I might see you down there. I hope so. Hope so. Excellent. Excellent. Hang on. Let me get back to my screen here. I'm, so, yeah, I might see you down in Fre uh, down in Chattanooga in November. So, um, how do we reach out to you guys? Uh, uh, first off, I'll put a link to your LinkedIn profile, and I'll also put a, a link to freight uh, to uh, the the conference for freight waves and a link to LoadSmart. That is great. The best way to get a hold of us is LoadSmart.com. Excellent. I'll put a link in the show notes, and we'll be all set. Ben, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. this. is a, This is an interesting new future we're seeing for our business. I agree, Joe, and I had a great time. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you so much. And thank all of you for listening to my podcast. Your support is very much appreciated. Until next time, onward and upward. You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.